Hey everybody, uh, back with another video, obviously. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different, probably, or something interesting. This is a Galaxian board. I had picked up um, a bunch of, I think, two or three non-working ones. Um, and I wanted to take a break from my missile command, so I put this on the bench. So just a quick overview. I'm not going to show everything I'm going to do to it. But it was missing at least one ROM, um, and I burnt that there and it doesn't have the daughter board so i so that's why i'm actually going to probably make this a four and one um and eliminate the daughter board i'm going to see if i can do that and show that how that's done but just a quick um, focused in there but if you can see there's like um, a jumper wire on the audio amp which is kind of weird and it does look like something was done to this before like there's an electrolytic cap there. I'm not sure. I don't think that was an electrolyte and a couple capacitors tied together. I don't know if there's some audio modification going on there. I might have to research that because it's kind of interesting. Several caps, you know, tied together and then I don't know if that's a resistor or what. Oh, that's just standing out in the air, not attached to anything. That, that blue thing right there. Um, if you can see that. So I don't know. That's kind of weird. It was missing these capacitors here. It's missing uh, D8. So I have some of those on order. I don't know if the auto, the uh, power section is working at all. And which is kind of interesting, and it looks like it's this way from the factory, is the RAM chips over here, and I can't, I know they're an oddball. It's like, um, what are they, like 82 S or something like S 201s or 82 I don't know something weird um, but I do have some replacements but it's missing one and there's definitely some funky like kind of corrosion on it but it's in the shadow there so I'm going to clean the board and but before I do that I'm just going to power it on with a test ROM and you put the test ROM right here in 7 I think that's 7F or something like that. Let's see, D E F. Yeah, 7F. Put the test ROM in and see what it does. And I'm going to bypass some of this power by hooking up to the right, capacitor so right hooked, here. So I'll be hooked up um, plus 5 volts to one of these decoupling caps on the edge there. I do have my um, edge connector tied in, but obviously that 5 volts probably is, if it is getting there, it's already filtered. So I don't really care about that anyway. I'm not paying attention to that. That part of the power supply. So let's go ahead and power it on with the. It says testing. Don't worry, it's making a weird noise. It says, oh, it said, it said RAM okay. Did it say DRAM? DRAM okay? I just found it this interesting. I did this already. VRAM okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So the, so it looks like the board's working, and I don't even have a RAM in um, R. Was that R1? I don't have that in R1, but it is making a weird audio noise. That's strange. All right, right so I went ahead and grabbed um, this daughter board that has Super Galaxian in it from, make sure I have the orientation right. Yeah, from um, one of my other working boards. The other thing is I do need a, to super glue the reset thing back on or replace this reset switch. Um, I think I have the top for it somewhere. But anyway, let's power it on. See what we get. Even without that RAM, it looks like it's working, which is kind of weird. I'll coin up real quick. I don't know why there's that popping noise after I coin up. And then we'll press start. And the popping noise stops when I hit start. I think that might be something to do with this. 
Okay, I don't have an explosion sound. No explosion sound. I do have, um... Do have the shooting sound, but no explosion sound. So I don't know. I wonder. I have to look. At, I haven't even looked at the schematics or anything. I just thought it was interesting that it passed the RAM test, DRAM test, when I'm missing some RAM. But maybe it's testing this RAM right here. I'm not sure. So, well, I totally um, screwed the video up, I guess, or I didn't film sequentially or something. I don't know. But I wasn't going to film all of my crazy stuff that I was doing to make it a four in one play, but um I did get some RAM and now or DRAM. These are 74 um S two oh ones um for the replacements there. And basically I'll link to the guy's website Marco something but it basically it tells you how to convert the board into a four in one Galaxian board. Basically you program a 25 a 27 512 with this rom here four play bin and then you um, program two different i guess graphic roms over here to 2732s as you can see here you pin you bend up uh, one of the legs it's all i'm not going to detail everything pin up all the um two of the legs tie those together and do some jumpers for different address lines um from the 28 pin uh the 28 pin 27512 and if you do it all correctly we should have a single ROM mod that plays four games and I think I have it all done it was kind of a pain in the butt and I don't have I don't think I don't know what kind of wire this is but it's a pain in the ass to solder maybe it's just me I don't know but um, I ordered some I think Kynar wire I don't think this is Kynar wire so I'll have to tidy that up etc so Anyway, I did get some capacitors. Still missing a Zener diode here. Hopefully, I can power this up like I'm going to without causing any problems. And let's throw some power to this thing. Throw caution to the wind. I'm kind of nervous, though. Is this going to work? Did I do a good job? Oh. Oh, shucks. Look at that. That was the first time, actually, I powered it on, which is sweet. It, it actually works. Um, I didn't make any mistakes, which is nice. Um, let me see here. Do I have to coin up? Select left and right. And then press fire to play. Well, that's cool. I might actually put this in my glass. No, I, damn it. I can't because I don't have the Zener diode. I need to check the AC power rectification. Hmm. All right, let me see if I can well, get this to play. I have it playing, but something's definitely not right. Um... That's going to be interesting to troubleshoot, isn't it? And th this board was working. Maybe, so maybe one of these other RAM chips is bad here. That's in, it's in the right spot. Interesting. I don't know why. Maybe something else happened, I guess. Oh, uh, boy. Going to have to troubleshoot something. Yep. I did. I goofed up, I think. This is pin... If you, you can't probably see it, but this is a 24, 23, 22. This needs to be pin 21. I screwed up which leg I lifted on this, on these ROMs. That's a dumbass, dumbass thing there. I think that's my problem right there because it was the graphics, and these are the graphic ROMs. And so I immediately just looked here and thought that, uh oh, that's not right. So okay, let me so fix that. Fix that, obviously. Fix the have the right pin pulled out of the graphics ROM. That helps. Um, and the game looks like it's playing um, okay. I have sound on this game. I noticed that I didn't have game sound on Exodus. And I still don't, I don't have my explosion sound. Yeah. No explosion sound, so I have to fix that. Um, and maybe I'll come back. I have to figure out why Exodus didn't have any sound either. That's weird. But I'll go through and, and see what the other games look like, so.
still excited though. The single mod ROM worked cool. All right, everybody, getting back to this after some travel and stuff. Um, I started diving in. Let's see, actually, let me catch you up. Um, still in the same condition as I had it before, but I did get a new Zener, so I put that in. I still haven't powered this um, up with AC power. But as far as, let's see if I switch it around here. I went ahead and removed that, whatever they were doing here with the C47. I removed that, and then I checked on the schematic, this little jumper wire. I'm thinking that maybe they had done some work on this amplifier. Maybe they replaced this LM377. It's kind of hard to see, and that trace um, is on top, which is uh, this little jumper cable there. So that jumper wire to R, what is the hell is that? I think that's not a mod. That's just a jumper wire because it's going from the output pin 13 of the LM377 to right here R. 93 100k resistor and that's exactly i ohm that out and it's it's correct and stuff but what i also did if i move over here is these were the i'll zoom in a little bit the this was the little doubled up capacitor there um and it's supposed to be i think 22 picofarads is the um, setting it's supposed to be so I figured we'd measure that real quick just over over documenting here I guess um, but I actually had to get my this Proster LCR tester because my other meter doesn't go down to picofarads it only goes down to nanofarads so alright and with the the leads just with the leads we're getting some reading and stuff so And it says it's all right let's try measuring this now capacitance wise so it is about 20 it's reading 27 28 right now picofarads and then just with the meters I have about seven and this little blue thing I know it's hard to see but this is the thing that was like actually standing um, not connected so I don't know if they thought this was bad and so they went to replace it as just to test something whoever was repairing this before Let's see if I can get get this tested here and we still have good a good reading so I assume that this little capacitor is okay and I'm gonna put that back in um, instead of but it looks like this is also good the way they have it set up I'll show you what they put on there and that's hard I couldn't even figure out what that reading is it's supposed to be 50 volts um, of a capacitor 22 picofarads 50 volts I don't know this thing doesn't even have any markings on it that I can see. But, all right, so I'm going to put that back on. And let's see, the other thing that was kind of interesting is there's another mod on here that I didn't do, which is right here by 7, by 1U. There's like a probably a 0 ohm resistor or something going on between let's see that's pin one two three four five I think that's pin nine of of that chip and probably going to ground I would suspect yeah that's that's ground so pin nine is getting grounded on that I don't know why that is I that's not on any other board so I'm curious. I'm, I'm just making a note because I want to follow back up on that. Otherwise, this board seems to be working. I'm just going to put that capacitor back in. And we will um, start troubleshooting from there. The other thing that I found out is, if I take this off real quick. We have some, um, I think this is our 2101s. I can't really see. 
9101 or 2101 Rams. These I think are your kind of like your working Rams. Um, there's also some 2114s, I guess. Yeah, 2114 Rams are here. So I believe in the test, like at the start of the video, that these two, this is the Ram, this is the V Ram, I think, and this is the working Ram, or I might have them backwards, but some of these are V Ram and what the other one's working Ram for the CPU, probably. And these over here, these um, 74S201s are actually um, a t what they call attack RAM. And if you noticed in the video, and I'll highlight it here in a second, but in the when I was playing some of the videos, as the Galaxians were coming down, they would lose their color and black lines would go through them. So they, and I think that has to do with here. So we're going to do a test on that um, as well as fix the um explosion sound so the explosion sound i haven't figured it out yet but i don't know if it's the noise there's a couple lines here it says audio coming in you have your um, fire sound over here and your hit sound oh hit that must be it that's the hit sound oh no that's me hitting them i think i have to do some research and stuff so i don't know where the explosion sound is if it's this noise function um, that's coming from off of my schematic there. So I'm going to figure that out and figure out this uh, explosion sound as well. Be right back. All right, I have it. I have it running there. So let's. Um, oh, the other the other thing is actually this mod right here on pin nine one U. I don't know. That might be factory. It's not on one of my Galaxian boards, but it is on this Galaxian board. I don't know if that's for. Super Galaxian. I have to do some research on that or somebody might tell me when they watch the video or something But let's go ahead and just have my little jumper here point up And then we're going to start And watch when the the attackers come down here, so I'll die here but watch that. See how they disappeared as they were flying through the other Galaxians? But the sound so sounds pretty decent. Oh. You see how they disappeared there? So I think that is um, this attack ram over here. So we're going to try to figure that out here first maybe well that one's pretty hot it doesn't have a heat sink on it so maybe I should that one's hot too <laughs> let me try replacing uh or no actually I'm gonna do a test on it first <clears throat> all right so I always got to clear my throat I guess I'm still sick but anyway I have a um, probe a little jumper here just set up on five volts one of the things it says you can do, and just to look at that real quick. To look at that, uh, you can see the game is actually in attract mode right there. So what we can do is um, take this 5-volt probe, and this is based off of the Galaxian troubleshooting guide. And on pin 4 of 8R... 8R You can um, hear the background noise. This is to test the background noise. And you can do the same thing for 8R, 8S, and 8T. And you should hear it kind of changing like that. So that's that sounds good. Now for the explosion, it says to do the same thing, but go to 9L pin 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... And I'm not getting anything. I'm not getting any noise. Then it says to come to the anode of D, D1. And I'm not getting the, anything there either. So it says to actually replace. I haven't tried that side. Okay. Um, it says to actually replace the anode. Um, the anode. The diode. If, uh, if you're not getting a noise. But then it says to also use our video probe like I used in the previous video. I'll link to that real quick. But it's I got my video probe, which is a is set up. 
and it says to come to R40 and see if you get dancing green lines and we're not really getting dancing lines we're just getting solid lines and I believe that that is the same as um, pin 1 yeah this is pin 1 of this LM324 here Whoops, and they're not dancing to me. So I'm I'm thinking that could be this LM324 could be the problem for our, for our explosion sound. So let me I have some LM324s here. Um, I'll either socket it or I'll try to put this. Should I try to piggyback it? I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea, but I'll try that. And All we'll, right, what I did was. Um, Fire, fired up a working board real quick just to verify what I'm seeing and doing. So you can see that there. I have my Super Galaxians on. Turn the volume up, I think, a little bit. And we will take our 5 volt jumper, if I could grab it, and go to 9 or go to that diode right there. Um, And that's what it should sound like on either side of the diode or on pin 7 of 9L. So this that's working. And if I take my video probe right here and go to, go to dang, I can't grab it. Um, basically this side of R40, or I could go to 17 pin one and still doesn't look like dancing green lines to me it looks exactly the same as the other one so I'm thinking that this amp this uh, the LM324 is actually okay probably um, I already socketed it actually but I'll come back to that and show that in a second so it's got to be something else because I'm not I gotta look at the schematic because it only references set. Uh, let's see, this D one nine L. Maybe there's something wrong with nine L. I don't know. I have to look at the schematic. All right, I'm back. I'm back at this thing. Um, I always have to take breaks for work, but let's see here. Um, I think I didn't show this, but I did end up socketing the LM three two four and tried a different L LM three two four. That that wasn't the problem. I didn't think it was the problem. Um, anyway, but since it had been replaced, the other thing is this 7R, which is a 4066, I think, um, am I right? Yeah, um, that has also been replaced. So it seems like somebody was working on this, trying to fix this problem that we're having with the no, no hit sound. Um, and then I was checking this diode real quick and I figured I'd just do this for you guys. This diode D1 or this capacitor, which is C21, which is a tantalum cap. Hopefully you can see. Let me zoom in just as much as I can. Like that. Okay, so um, I have a... Uh, let's switch to diode. And just do a measurement here real quick. It says over limit if I go from the anode... Um, side with the positive lead and I measure okay there 0.56 you know which is normal from uh, the non anode side to the whatever like that okay that was interesting um, the over limit thing so since I have another board I figured I'd do the same thing on a different board so you, typically you can't measure diodes in circuit all the time um, Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, but when you have a board to compare to, you might as well use it. So that's All right, I know it's kind of hard to see because I got this daughter board in here, but measuring D1 the same way, you get 0.55, if you can see that, which is fine, that direction. And then the positive lead to the anode side, we get 1.39. So we're definitely seeing something different, and I think that has to do potentially with this capacitor here. So what I did then 
if hopefully let me see if I can do this on camera on this front side of the board is set up my DCR meter which is a, analyzes the capacitors and shit I guess I can't do it that way let me come right back all right this is the working board and this is the cap right here I know you're not going to be able to really reference this but we want to put that on our capacitor meter here let me zoom out just a little bit So we're getting a reading, right? It's not great, but for 2.2 um, microfarads, you know, it's probably in the yellow, so it's still okay. Now let's go to the non-working board. And this is the non-working board. I'm not getting any reading at all with my DSR meter. So even though I'm touching the bottom side of the capacitor, it makes me think that that um, capacitor is no good. So I'm going to go ahead and desolder that, and also desolder one of the one leg of the um, diode, which is a switching diode. It's a one in four one four eight. So I'm going to desolder those and see if that's our problem. Okay, so I had um, replaced that little capacitor, and I. It didn't fix it, and I replaced the uh, diode, and that didn't fix it. So <clears throat> I wanted to break out my original, my working board, and just do some measurements real quick. So um, what I did is I hooked up my logic probe, and I am going to, let's see here. Basically, if I look at the signal here, um, the hit signal comes in. R89 goes through the diode. If we touch the anode side of the diode, it should make um, the hit sound. And it comes into this 4066 at 7R pin 4, which is up over here. One, two, three, four. And goes, which is low right now. And then goes out on pin three. Can you see that? Yeah. which is also low. And pin five is basically toggling with some noise. And if you trace that back, it go, ties into this resistor, says noise, comes up, and goes all the way over to, I, I, it's off this sheet here, but 2D pin nine, which is over here, and is a 74, 2D pin 9, and that's a 7474, 74 LS74. So, anyway, what I was going to do is just document this, video document this real quick. We're going to come to pin 3, 1, 2, 3, and make our noise. Whoops. So you can see that it's integrating that um, that noise signal. Um, once it goes high, then it integrates with that noise signal and then goes away. So just want to document that real quick, and then let's fire up the non -working. All right, so I have the board working. <clears throat> I mean, I have the work board uh, plugged in. You can see I replaced... I still think this capacitor was bad, but I replaced D1 and this capacitor here. I think that that was bad. Um, but that still didn't solve my problem. And I'm actually going to start a, a game here real quick. Alright, I started a game real quick and then just want to see... It's, you can see that on this side, the non-banded side of D1, when I get hit, we want to see that toggle to high so that we know the hit signal is being generated. So we know that the the hit signal is being generated. 
um, to D1, which then should change this to high, which it is. And that high signal goes to, but it should go away. That high signal goes to pin 4 of 7R. 1, 2, 3, 4. So something, it has to be this chip, this 7R, I think. Because it should, <clears throat> our timing, or our noise circuit seems to be working correctly on pin 5 of 7R. But this is just staying high and it shouldn't, it should go away. And this is low. But, but, but now it just did go away, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now it's just open or floating or something, which it shouldn't be, which is kind of weird. Yeah, so strange. <clears throat> Why is that? And pin three is low right now. Which it should be. Pin 3 should be low. Right there. Pin 3 is low. So maybe it's... Could be some of these capacitors or resistors here. we got our noise coming in. This toggles. When that toggles, this should do something. So maybe C22 or C23 is bad? I don't know. This resistor I checked, R35 I checked, and R36 I checked, and those re two resistors check out okay. Did I, I don't know if I checked R37. Wacky. Very strange. Three is low, and four is neither low nor high. But if I toggle it here just that should have given us a noise I just touched the anno side now I have three is four is low when sh four should actually be high <laughs> whack something's going on I don't know I have to figure it out all right, I went ahead and socketed um, 7R, and I couldn't find a, a 4066. But I went into my um, spare boards. I didn't have any on hand. And just a real shout-out to Bob Roberts. When I first got started, he had these spare boards, like if you wanted to learn how to solder or desolder um, stuff. And he sent me this board right here with some random stuff that I bought. But anyway, this is probably like the third or fourth board that I fixed <laughs> with just this one um, random thing that uh, Bob gave me and it had a 4066 on there so anyway um, let's see here if I go to D1 now like that you can hear our noise so that issue was the 4066 I'm gonna need to order some um, because this is obviously used probably so I want to put a new one in there but it is working now so on to the attack ram which is over here so I'm gonna break out my video pro probably or my um there's some specific troubleshooting on that so we'll fix that here in a second. Alright a little anticlimactic here I just um saw one of the original ones I just swapped it out and it worked because I had spares and they're socketed so swapped this one out at that was um, S1 I think I'm pretty sure that's S1 um, swapped that out and I think I'm gonna put this in my um, Galaxian cabinet and see if it works everybody I think I'm gonna break this up into a different video I have a longer video going on um, troubleshooting this Galaxian board but when I put it back in the cabinet, um, AC power wasn't working. So what I did is actually hooked up a Pac-Man transformer, wired up my AC power, um, 
so I could troubleshoot the AC power section. It's very simple to troubleshoot. There's not a lot of components. The first thing you need to do is there's a jumper here by um, D6 and D7. You want to remove that jumper because that connects the regulated 5 volts to the rest of the board for the chips, and etc. And then there is a crowbar circuit, I think, um, that comes back um, this way. I believe so. I might actually double check that. But anyway, so the first thing you want to do is remove that. And then te well, we're going to test these diodes real quick. We can test the capacitors, um, this transistor here, this MPN, as well as this voltage regulator. Um, now that I powered up. Also, we want to check these two resistors here. One is um, 4 ohms and one's 50 ohms. So I'm going to do that real quick and we'll be right back. All right, let's put our tester, I mean our multimeter to diode test. And then we're just going to check from the banded side. That doesn't seem right, does it? There we go. Need to disconnect the, the AC power there, but we got over limit on the banded side to the unbanded side. Like that. Gonna test these here. Same thing. Same thing. And then in the reverse direction, just like testing a normal diode, we should have 0.4 to 0.8. So we know that's good. Test our here. Test our resistors. This should be 50 ohms. This should be 4 ohms. And that's what we get. Um, we want to check for shorts on the capacitors. I don't think you can test these in circuit, actually. Yeah, you can't test those in circuit. I'm not... <clears throat> but I just replaced these, so I know they're good. Or at least I believe they are. Alright, I plugged in the AC power there. We're going to test uh, from ground, which I'm grabbing from one of these capacitors, to base. And... Should get five point like six. Yeah, this is about right, I think. Around six volts uh, DC to the that is the base, right? Yeah. And then this is the collector. Getting about eight volts there. Nine volts DC. And then I have seven volts on the emitter. So it's a B, C, E is what it should be anyway. And if you come to, hopefully you can see this okay, because I got my meter in the way a little bit. But this is your 5 volts from, coming from the voltage regulator. This should be your 5 volts, which matches the emitter side here. They're tied together. This is your input into the voltage regulator, which is 15.6 volts. Can't really see it. And then the output here is around 6 volts. That output comes to the base here. So I'm thinking this is wrong. So the output of the voltage regulator, 5.9, goes to base, which is 5.9. Collector is 8, which is coming from the diodes up here, D7 and D6. But the emitter is 7. Now, I don't know if that's because I currently have the jumper removed. 
that so there's no 5 volt load so maybe it can't regulate itself what I'm going to do is put this jumper back in test it again um, and then probably replace this with a tip 31 okay right instead back. of putting the jumper in I just want to see if I can test it with um, I pulled this transistor this uh, D44 VM4 and replaced it with a tip 31 but putting my meter to diode test right away from base to emitter I get no reading there base to emitter or base to collector which um, you should get some voltage drop there so this thing appears to be bad so let's go ahead and power it on plug it in power it on let's see what we get Still 7.6 volts. Six volts there. Eight volts there. Still 7.7 .7 there. So, uh, so maybe it, I assume that this was bad. But let's go ahead and put that jumper back in and see if it regulates itself. Got my jumper in. See what we get. Four point nine volts looks good. Yep, four point nine volts. And if I just come to one of these capacitors down here, four point nine volts. Okay, so we are now good to go um, with this board. It was ended up being that transistor right here was wasn't able to test it in circuit um, sufficiently. And obviously, without having that jumper in there, there's no 5-volt load, so it's not regulating itself. So that's not a great way either. So, all right. That's all I have. Let me put this in the, the cabinet, see if we get, right, get it working. Just plugged it in. See if we'll get it to work. Yep. Now to reset it, I'm gonna have to wire up a different button. All right, well, this video is long enough, so I figured I'd play play some here. This is Galaxian, so we'll just play a, a quick, quick part of every um, game, I guess. This is Galaxian. So this, this should be normal, but it does say Namco. On the um, on the attract mode, you gotta love getting the triple there. <clears throat> I'm not gonna play a whole game, but I just figured I'd play a little bit to show the different speed. So that that's Galaxian, and if I hit the test switch. We'll go back or reset the game. You'll go back into the main menu. So if we play Super Galaxians, and I don't have the dip switch setting set correctly. So this is Super Galaxians. And you can tell right from the get go that the Galaxians are super fast. Holy shit. I do like Super Galaxians. I like this game. Um, it's just that the, your 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 shooting is the same speed, but the Galaxians are faster. All right, so that's Galaxians. All right. I mean, that was Super Galaxians. Now, Galaxian Part X. Let's see here. Now, this one, you're shooting... You're, look how fast your, your bullets go. So, it... And it... I think the Galaxians are a little bit more herky-jerky. I don't know if, this, if I like this one as much as... 
Super Galaxians and they can go off the screen like that. Then, oh my god. <laughs> they sp split and everything. That's crazy. I mean, getting the timing of your of your missile shots is almost impossible. I mean, this it just seems like insanity, basically. <clears throat> Oh my goodness. And my, you can see my dip switch settings are set to like five guys. I haven't messed with the dip switches yet. Good gracious. How painful is this? Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, Super Galaxians, right? Super, no, this is Gal Super Galaxians X or something. All right, so now let's reset, and we'll go to Exodus, and the behavior of this game on this kit is acting weird for me. I emailed the guy who made the kit, Mike um, something, like the service switch isn't even working. I can't coin up with the service switch, so let me see if I can coin up with... I can't coin up with the service switch, but I can coin up with the coin up. Oh! That's the first time it made any noises. Oh, it's making noises now. Weird. Oh, that's interesting. This wasn't making noises before, now it is. But the service switch wasn't working. Miraculously cleared itself. This is called Exodus, which looks fun. This is the first time I'm playing it, actually. Because I, damn, this game, it wasn't, the sound wasn't working when I had this on the bench. I wonder if it's because I wasn't using the coin up or something. No, no, I did. I don't know what the hell. I don't know why this sound wasn't working when I was on the bench. Now this game is interesting. I mean, I like regular Galaxians and Super Galaxians, but in Exodus, I don't know about Galaxian X. So that does it for this video, guys. I wanted to make one more last uh, little bit of video so you could see all the diff the four different games playing. And I'm glad that um, the Exodus sound is working. I don't know why it's working, but it is working. Maybe I was only in a track mode and there was no sound in a track mode. I was never able to coin it up because I was hitting the service switch. No, I was hitting coin. Damn, I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Drinking uh, Voodoo Ranger. Am I right? Imperial. Yeah, Imperial. So, cheers. Till next time.